Well, I hope you're remembering to pray for all of those that are in the path of the storm and the amount of flooding that's occurring, the lives that have already been lost, and many more that may be lost because of flooding and uh, storm winds. Uh, during the time that we've been studying the last few days, we've been studying about the Lord's Supper, uh, the last supper that Jesus said he would have here on this earth with his disciples and a new covenant that it was entered in and Peter going to deny him and uh, they went out and uh, sung, sung a hymn and went out into the garden and uh, he prayed three prayers out there. But in the Gospel of John, we have some additional words that were probably spoken during the Lord's Supper and uh, uh, maybe some time of questioning and answering that Jesus did. But uh, I want to try to cover those with you. Uh, we find them all the way from John 14 to John 16, uh, and we're going to try to cover them in detail. John 14, 1, uh, I remember this is uh, probably the Thursday night before the crucifixion, and uh, we find uh, Jesus with his disciples, and he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Well, I think there's a wonderful four promises in these four verses. Uh, we, we see that it's by faith, believing, uh, and trusting. Uh, and he tells us very clearly to not let our hearts be troubled. But what are the promises that he makes here? He says, in the Father's house there are many dwelling places. <laughs> There'll be no shortage of places for us to dwell in heaven. He says, I prepare a place for you. Now, you think about this wonderful world that we live in here and think that he prepared this for us. But if he's going to prepare a place for us for eternity, think of what an incredible place he's preparing for us in heaven. So we have many dwelling places. We have a place prepared for us. And he says, I will come again. <laughs> We're all anxiously waiting for him to come again, and he is going to come again. And then finally, the fourth promise, and I will receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Eternal place in heaven prepared just for us, and we're going to be able to spend it with Jesus himself. You know the way? I know the way. Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary that our sins might be forgiven as a gift, as a free gift by grace and mercy, and that we can receive that if we just believe and trust in him, turning from our sins the best that we can, not works, but just because of his amazing grace. You know the way, I know the way, and I know that he's coming again to receive me to himself, that where he is, I may be also. And that's my thought for the day. Well, we do know that you can know that you're going to heaven. Most people say, I hope so, but uh, the scriptures in the book of Romans make it very clear. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, that is, sin is anything that's displeasing to God, and we've all done things displeasing to God. So we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And God demonstrated his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's Romans 5.8. So we are sinners, but Christ died for us. And then in Romans 5, 6, it says, while well, we were still helpless, that is, we couldn't do good enough works to earn our way into heaven. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, Romans 5, 6. We were helpless, but at the right time, Christ died for us. 
Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. We all earned our wages, which is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, that means there's nothing we can do to earn it or deserve it. It's a free gift of God. It's by grace and grace alone. But that's not freedom to just continue in sin either. And the way that we receive it is in Romans 10 verse 9. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Well, I hope that you know for certain that you're going to heaven. I hope that you've turned away from sin and self, turned to Jesus alone, who gives by grace eternal life. Yeah, yes, it, there is some surrender involved, and yes, there is a, a turning away from sin, but that's not how we earn heaven. We don't earn it. We, des we get it from him as a gift, and that's what the scripture says clearly. It's by grace and grace alone. God bless you and have a great day.